Good morning. Um, obviously, I'm not Pastor Greg. Uh, he is in California with uh, Maida's family celebrating the new year. So uh, he'll be back on January 2nd, but we certainly want to keep him in prayers. And uh, all the people on the prayer, in the prayer concerns. And we want to lift up a celebration of a new baby, Sonia's grandchild who was born uh, on December 26th. Okay, sorry, I don't have that right in front of me. Hang on, people. Sorry, Sonia. <laughs> um, and it's Freya Grace, Freya Grace. And uh, she was born on December 22nd, or 26th, and weighed six pounds, 10 ounces. We celebrate that with Sonia. And that's the rose up, up in the altar for that. So as we begin our worship, we begin with this call to worship. Please rise. Arise, shine, for your light has come. You, creator God, brought light out of darkness. You, 
Your glory shone from the face of your son, Jesus. Who all would say, I am the light of the world. The people who sat in darkness have seen great light. Let us celebrate the light of the world. For upon us has the light shone. So for our opening hymn, um, would somebody like to uh, call out a favorite Christmas song that they have? Uh, please, if you would give the hymn number so that Christina is able to play it, and we'll sing the two verses of one choice and two verses of another choice. 298. 298. Let me get my hymnal. What number? Uh, 277. 277. First two verses. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. <clears throat> the first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10 through uh, chapter 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn, 
and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a beautiful crown in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. The second reading is Psalm 148, and it's read responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord of the earth, you sea monsters and all the Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, and trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is God's word and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful. For the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 2. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves to, and a, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw, has seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what is customary under the law. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for your glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your soul too. There also was a prophet, Anna, 
the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. <clears throat> she never left the temple, but worshiped there fasting day and night. And at that moment, when she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to who all were looking for the redemption of Israel, Jerusalem, when they finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. So you know what they say, there's no songs like the old songs. I think that's why we love Christmas so much. It's because at Christmas, we sing all those familiar Christmas carols, the songs that we've known and loved all our lives. You know, while the world now, Christmas is over for most of the world. Many people are putting all their Christmas stuff away. But we, in the church, we're still celebrating Christmas. We are in the Christmas season. You know, the 12 days of Christmas. And singing carols is something that is so wonderful to be able to do. We don't just do it on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. So today, I want to focus on one of those old songs. In fact, it's probably one of the oldest Christmas carols of them all, though it's really not a carol that we commonly sing these days. But nevertheless, it's a wonderful old song. Not only that, but it's interestingly enough that this old song was first sung by two old people. I don't know what it is for you at Christmas, but for me, Christmas time is a time when I think of all the people who have had a significant impact on my life. Some of them are here. Some of them have gone to their heavenly home. But especially at Christmas, we remember them. Who do you remember? Who are you thinking of? Maybe it's grandparents, parents, spouses, siblings, Whoever it is, those songs that we sing at Christmas bring back those memories and those people. But it also helps us create new memories as we celebrate. The new memories of our own Christmas Eve, our own Christmas Day, our own memories of even today. We create new memories. So today, I want us to remember two people who sang a song. Their names were Simeon and Anna. And we know something about them. We know, for example, that they were both advanced in years. Simeon's age isn't exactly given to us precisely, but we do know from the passage that Simeon was a priest in the temple in Jerusalem. Now, that was a position that was granted on the basis of seniority. You don't, you're not a young priest in the temple. You kind of have to be old because once you receive a certain age, you are deemed as wise. I'm not sure that's true in our society, but <laughs> and then it was you were wise. That was a, and so we know that he was a priest because we are told Mary and Joseph took the baby to the temple to do what was customary under the law. The Jewish law decreed that the firstborn in a Jewish family, especially a male, had to be presented to the priest in the temple of Jerusalem within 40 days after birth. Now, you may think that's a long time, but I'm not sure that's a really long time. But anyway, that's what Joseph and Mary were doing. They took Jesus to the temple to present him to the priest. When we are told that Simeon took the child in his arms, that's the clue that we know that Simeon was the priest in the temple. Therefore, we can certainly assume that Simeon was well along in years. Now, Anna, the other person who sang the song, her age is revealed to us. And quite specifically, 
She lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a wit widow until she was 84. I find it very interesting that the story gives these little details, very specific details. Whatever the reason, it is clear that Simeon and Anna were quite advanced in years. Now we know something else about them. We know something of their character. And you know, I always find it interesting that in scripture, sentences are really condensed. They're, they're like, you know, they're just a couple words and you already know the character of the person. No long descriptive paragraphs, just a phrase or two. You know, we don't need to read the war and peace novel to figure out who these characters are. It's kind of nice. But what does the story say of Anna? The story says she never left the temple, but worshiped day and night, fasting and praying. That's all scripture tells us. And yet we seem to know her just by those few words. Simeon is even described in fewer words. His character is summed up like this. He was righteous and devout, okay? He was a righteous man knowing that only by the grace of God was that possible. His character mirrored his beliefs. His, action, his actions were devout. He was, he was righteous and devout. We are also told in the passage that Simeon was well been informed by the Spirit of God that he would not die until he had seen the Lord with his own eyes, the Lord's Christ. It was that hope which then became the driving force in Simeon's life, compelling him all the decades he lived. Simeon belonged to the Lord and let it show in his life. He was righteous and devout. The song that Simeon sings is one of the oldest Christmas carols of them all. For you see, at the moment Mary and Joseph put the baby Jesus in Simeon's arms, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, you have promised. Now you dismiss your servant in peace for my eyes have seen your salvation. What an incredible moment that must have been. Simeon was declaring that the promise of God made to him now had been fulfilled. The hope that he had been holding all of these years came true. In the baby he held in his arms, he could see and say, the savior of the world is born. Therefore, he says he can face death or anything else in life, serene and unafraid. Why? Because the Savior had come. By that same token, you and I can stand in the face of the world, this world which is often tense, tough, and trying. And we can stand in the face of anything that comes our way with this conviction, Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. That, dear friends, makes all the difference in the world. No matter what, God is with us through the good and the bad sustaining us. We are coming to an end of a year, and soon a new year will begin. We have hope for a new year. We also are saying goodbye to the old year. And today we are singing our Christmas carols to celebrate that God has come to us and makes a home in our hearts. Because we see once Jesus Christ is born in the manger of a human heart, the Lord never leaves. So now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Amen. Would someone like to make a suggestion for a song?
Yes. 275. Two, Two verses. <laughs> And let us rise. our statement of faith together, which is found in your bulletin. Let us begin. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that might we receive adoption as children. And because we are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So we are no longer slaves, but children. And if children, then heirs of Christ through God. Amen. Trusting in God's good news of great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world God loves. Your praise is sung throughout creation in all times and seasons. As the new year turns, ground us in your changeless and sustaining love. Keep us attentive to the rhythms of the cosmos and inspire us to live in harmony with all the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Sure. Sustain all people who, like Simeon and Anna, have been waiting for salvation and wholeness, especially, we pray. We pray especially for anyone living with cancer or chronic illness, all people who are in physical rehabilitation or addiction recovery. Lord, in your mercy. Let this community of faith be a joyful and welcome place for all ages and generations. Teach us to honor the wisdom of children, the inquisitiveness of youth, the thoughtfulness of adults, and the knowledge of elders. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all the beloved who lived with expectation and departed this life in peace. Sustain us in joy until we join them around your throne. Lord, in your mercy. 
Abide with us, O God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us take time to share the peace with one another. Come on, people. That, what, round up the troops? <laughs> All right, we got to round up the troops here. There. Okay, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so most of the announcements are in your bulletin. Um, I just want to highlight um, one person who is in the hospital. Uh, Lynn Crichton is, in the, is at St. Joseph Hospital. Um, she, I understand she's better, but she'll be there for a couple days. So we want to make sure we keep Lynn in our prayers. Uh, is there, are there any other announcements? Yes, Gail. Month, and there's going to be a couple temple talks and a skit. We're going to hand out um, the pledge forms, the gift of talent pledge forms on January 14th, and then Stewardship Sunday is January 28th. So, 
Get ready for January. <laughs> my brother is here from Virginia. My cousin Jenny is here from uh, Wisconsin. They've been with us throughout the holidays, and they leave tomorrow and Tuesday. So I don't know. Safe and travels. I have many memories of here. <laughs> Safe travels home. Yes. yes. Anything else? Any other announcements? Okay, Pastor Greg will be back on uh, January 2nd, um, so just so you know, and um, we'll continue our service with this offering of music and our offerings. Let us read the offertory prayer together. O oh God, open us unto the light of your darkness, courage for our fear, hope for our despair. O oh God of peace, open to us peace for turmoil, joy for our sorrow, strength for our weakness. O oh generous God, open our hearts to receive all your gifts. Amen. <clears throat> May you know that God is Comfort is with us, with you. Open wide our anxious hearts. Let us give thanks and share our joy. Our story tells us that the Christ child whose birth we anticipated will one day sit at tables with strangers and friends building relationships filled with love and grace. We see this as he fed the multitude, multitude turned water into wine and ate with dear ones the night before his death. Jesus, the Christ, Emmanuel, God is with us, light of the world. And in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and gave it for all to do to eat, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the, for remembrance of me. No matter how we know him or by what we call him, he is our hope, our peace, our joy, and our love. May the Spirit bless us and these elements as we commune to remember them. For the nourishment of spirit, mind, and body, for the hope we all see. For the comfort of the Prince of Peace. Encourage us in these shortened days. May your hope carry us until dawn arrives again, and we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome at the God's table. Let us share of God's meal.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Since um, Pastor Greg isn't here, I get to do my favorite blessing. <laughs> so I'm, I, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It truly is my favorite blessing. <laughs> Let us sing Joy to the World, number 267. Thank you. 